Hi, my name's Isaac. Nowadays, there are a lot of mid-sized pickup trucks that are very capable off-road. And then, there's the Ranger Raptor. A mere eight years ago, if you were interested in purchasing an off-road focused mid-sized truck in the US, the craziest thing you could buy was probably a Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road. But nowadays, that's not the top off-road trim from Toyota. In fact, it's not even the second top off-road trim from Toyota. They now have the TRD Pro and the new Trail Hunter. Chevy has the Colorado ZR2. GMC has the AT4X. Jeep has the Gladiator Mojave. And Nissan has the new Frontier Pro 4X. And finally, Ford has come into the game with the new Ranger Raptor in the US market. Is it able to compete with all these other off-road focused trucks in this increasingly popular segment of vehicles? And more importantly, perhaps, is it able to live up to the legacy of the F-150 Raptor and the new Bronco Raptor? Well, let's find out. Starting out up front here, you'll have full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. The headlights also turn with the wheels. I think it's an incredibly aggressive and sharp look up front here. Ford is spelled out across the grill. Unfortunately, while there are cutouts for them, this does not include the amber marker lights that have become a staple of other Ford Raptors. They are available aftermarket though. You'll have a front camera that works with the 360 degree camera system and it's also great if you're doing off-roading, you can activate that and see what's in front of you in case there's a big rock or something that's very helpful. Then moving down here, you'll have parking sensors, two tow hooks, and a huge skid plate. Now there are a ton of additional off-road features I'll talk about in a second, but I specifically wanted to highlight the fact that this has 2.5 inch Fox live valve shocks and 10.7 inches of ground clearance. Moving underneath the hood. Wait, Dave from Ford? Hello, Isaac. Why are you a force ghost? Uh, I don't know, why not? Okay, well, why are you here? Uh, I just wanted to mention that this is the most powerful mid-sized truck. So I don't want to hear anyone in the comments complain about how this doesn't have a V8. Okay, again. But Dave is right. This is powered by the same twin turbo V6 that's in the Bronco Raptor. And while this is slightly detuned, it still makes 405 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque making this the most powerful mid-sized truck out of the factory currently available for sale today. Thanks, Dave. No problem. I'll tell you, these cutaway jokes just keep getting weirder and weirder. Hey, Dave, what do you drive, by the way? I never asked. Fort Flex. Yeah, that seems to track. Moving to the profile of the Ranger Raptor, starting here with the wheels and massive tires, you'll get BF Goodridge 28570R tires around these 17 inch wheels. I think it looks fantastic. You'll have these nice fender flares that blend into the bumper here. You'll have a running board kind of rock rail right here that says Raptor. Then pulling back to the mirror cap, it is body colored. There's a camera incorporated into it a puddle light right down here, a turn signal indicator, there's blind spot monitoring, their power adjusting and power folding. So if I hit lock right there on the keyless entry, they'll fold in. For a mid-sized truck, this is pretty wide, so it's nice that that feature is available. As you can see already, there is keyless entry, so if I have the key in my pocket, I can just tap this and it will lock the vehicle and then I can just put my hand back there to unlock it. 
You also have Ford's keypad system right here. So if you'd like to lock your keys in the truck, you want to go snowboarding or something like that, you can do that and create a passcode for yourself. That's very, very cool. As you can see, I haven't really cleaned this truck up from when I shot the intro because that's kind of part of the cool factor of this truck is getting it dirty. You'll have a massive Raptor badge right here, like a sticker on the side of the bed. That's a really cool look. Then you'll have your rear taillight right here with blind spot monitoring incorporated into that. Then back here, oh, will you look at that? It says subscribe to Alpha Shark. Well, I guess you have to listen to the truck. Uh, what an odd thing to say. Um, it has parking sensors right here. There is recovery hooks down further and your tow hitch. This has a pretty decent towing capacity for what this is. And then moving up here, you have Ranger stamped into the tailgate, your Ford emblem, which is blacked out with a backup camera right there, Raptor and another slightly more subtle sticker back here. And then you do have a kind of puddle light back here. Dropping the tailgate, it is soft down and there is C-clamp little uh, latches right there. So there is some functionality here with the bed too. It's not just for off-roading and Baja stuff. You can use this as a truck for work. And that's proven even further by the fact that there's a 12 volt back here and a household outlet. It's a 120 volt with a 400 watt max. That's very cool. You do have a spray and bed liner with tie downs and LED bed lights. So a lot of capability in the rear of this truck. Before we move to the interior, I just want to highlight the key fob really quick. It's a fairly simple Ford key fob apart from saying Raptor. It has lock, unlock, panic, and remote start. Real quick, before we move to the interior, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the color of this Raptor. I absolutely love it. But what do you think the color is? I think my first thought would be maybe brown, sort of bronzy. Well, Ford actually calls this color shelter green. And while I suppose there are some flakes of green in it, I see more brown than anything. What do you guys think? Moving to the interior of the Ranger Raptor, it has a lot of hallmarks of other recent Raptor models, including these big seats with Raptor stamped in up here. Honestly, I think these are some of the most comfortable seats I have ever sat in in any vehicle in my life. And I know you're like, oh, come on, Isaac, that's ridiculous. These things are incredibly plush. You just sink right into them. It's kind of like your dad's armchair. You know the one you're not allowed to sit in? It's like that. You know, you, you jump in one time when he's not home just to see what it feels like and you just sink down. You're like, oh my word, this is incredible. That is the best way to describe these seats. They're also power adjusting with power lumbar. And the fun details don't stop there. Moving over here to the door panel, I'll talk about all the features over here and then move throughout the rest of the interior. This is soft touch up here. It's kind of a Alcantara kind of material. It's very, very nice, very comfortable place to rest your arm. And then this is a cool texture down here. This is also soft touch. And then you have a neat door handle from the inside here, it's kind of this pull tab. Then you'll have your window controls, mirror controls, as I mentioned before, these mirrors are power folding, so all I have to do is tap that button. Then the lighting controls are down here. And then moving up here, there is a standard turn signal 
and windshield wiper stock. You also get paddle shifters, which is really cool. It's very, very fun to drive this truck with the paddle shifters. The steering wheel is very comfortable. As you can see, it's got that red accent here at the top of the steering wheel. It says Raptor down here. Again, both hallmarks of Ford's Raptor vehicles, whether you get the Bronco, the F-150, or this one, it really does feel like the baby brother of those other vehicles when you step inside here. Now, there are controls right here for the radar guided cruise control, the volume, Bluetooth, and then over here are really fun buttons. You have controls for the digital gauge cluster screen. That's not abnormal. You can cycle through a bunch of different modes on there and it'll pull up some off-road things. But my favorite cluster of buttons are these ones right here and then the R, which we'll get to in a second. If you tap the steering wheel, it'll actually give you the option to choose between how you want the steering to feel. Same thing for the suspension right here. You can choose for it to be sporty and maybe you want the steering to be normal. And if I want the exhaust note to be sport or Baja, you can do that too. It really does give you a lot of customization and it's nice if you are pulling into a neighborhood at night you can make that exhaust note really quiet so it's not obnoxious to people. And then when you get out on the highway, you can turn on that exhaust note and let it rip. I love that feature on the Raptor models. I think it is so cool. Tapping this button brings you into the R mode and that pulls up the different settings for that as you can see. So there's a lot of customization on this, which I really like. The multiple options you get really make this truck feel more off-road capable because it gives you a little bit of a flare and you can add your own personal touch to however you want the truck to feel. Moving on over here, the push button start is actually on the steering column. Now this is manually adjusting. You just pull that tab and you can go up, down, and fully tilt and telescope it. But I don't know if I've ever reviewed a vehicle where the push button start was actually on the column itself. That's very unique. Where the button would normally be, you'll get your trailer brake assist, and then you have the massive infotainment screen right here. Now this infotainment system is pretty responsive. I have noticed it does lag a little bit at times, but the Apple CarPlay works very well. And then down here you have some of your climate controls. Heated seats and a heated steering wheel are available. I do wish this had cooling seats, especially for the price. Though the seats are so incredibly comfortable, it sort of makes up for that lack of cooled seats. Now you do have physical buttons down here for the climate, which I love but some of them are incorporated into the screen, so it's kind of a hybrid. There are a lot of features built into this screen in general, and while I'm not gonna get to everything, I do wanna talk about some of the highlights. For example, you'll have your camera system right here. You will have quite a few different modes, a top-down view, you can zoom into if you want. If you wanna zoom into like a corner, you can do that. And then you have a lot of other options. Let's say you want to do the front camera. You can do that. That's what it's on right now. You can do kind of a tri front camera design right there. And then you can go rear camera. You can do just like a trailer hitch if you're backing up to tow with this thing. There really is a lot of modes. Now, if I click this other button right up here, that's going to drop down a bunch of different settings and things that you can mess with here. Ford Assist, General, Connectivity, Bluetooth, stuff like that. But I always like to highlight zone lighting. So if you turn this on, you can actually set all the lights around the truck to turn on. This is great at nighttime, maybe you're at a campsite, and if you want, you can turn off specific zones and that will allow you to maybe hone in specifically where you want the light to be. But I think that's a great feature. I wish more trucks had that. But as of right now, I believe only the Fords do. So that's a feature I always love to highlight. I think it's fantastic. And then moving further down here, you will have wireless charging and a little storage cubby right there, USB and USB-C further back. And then your shifter 
is right here. Admittedly, this shifter is a little confusing and takes some getting used to. So when you put your hand on it, your instinct is probably to go here to the side to click to shift. Well, that doesn't work. That's actually where the manual mode is. And when you click that, uh, it basically defaults to the paddle shifters right there. No, the actual shift button is up here at the front. Okay, so you wanna shift. So you grab that and you shift back, you're in drive. You shift forward, you're in reverse. But you know, when you're initially shifting, I've found that sometimes I accidentally shift into neutral or back into drive if I just wanna put it into reverse. It's a little bit complicated and kind of frustrating initially. Throughout this week and my testing of this vehicle, I have gotten used to it, but almost every time for the first couple of days, I would you know, go grab for it and I'd hit this side button. I will say I do like the red stitching and attention to detail that is on this. And of course that continues out uh, on throughout the rest of the interior too. Moving further down, you'll have an electronic parking brake. And then over here, you'll have your drive mode selector. So if you spin this, on our infotainment screen, sorry, the gauge cluster screen, it will shift into whatever drive mode you're in and it gives you that neat graphic. I think that's really, really cool. Wait a minute, hold on. That's just the thumbnail of this video from a different angle. <laughs> but um, it does give you a lot of different settings and a lot of things pop up when you shift between each mode. So that's really cool as you can see. And then you can shift right here, but when you shift between your modes, it'll actually shift automatically if you'd like. Then down here, you have your parking assist button. This will like back you up into a parking space if you need to, traction control off, and auto engine start stop. And then if you hit this button right here, as you can see that screen lags a little bit sometimes. It is gonna pop up at some point, there it is. It will give you your tire pressure and some of the off-road settings in here, hill descent control. You can adjust your rear locker right here and your front locker if you want to. So it will pop up and it'll give you your front camera with guiding lines that turn with the wheel. So kind of an additional off-road thing that you can pop into right there. But like I said, the screen does sometimes take a second to pop back in. Right here, it is a very, very comfortable armrest. Look, look at how plush that is. It's just so nice to sit in here. It is truly one of the best, most comfortable mid-size truck interiors I've ever been in. And then opening this up, you have a little storage tray. And then down here, you have a 12 volt and some more storage. Moving up top, you have an auto dimming mirror. Now you do get a power sliding rear window. That's something I've talked about in the past. I wish these midsize trucks had, and this one finally includes it, which I love. Your dome lights, little sunglasses holder, and some auxiliary buttons up here. Always nice to see auxiliary buttons. I do wish that this came with a sunroof, however. Unfortunately, it's just not an option here on the Ranger Raptor. I don't know if they determine, oh, enthusiasts aren't really interested in a sunroof or not. So I'm not sure why that's not an option here. But overall, it is a pretty good interior. These front seats are very nice. This is comfortable up here on the dash as well. Tapping that opens that little storage box. And then you have more storage right here. And you have a pretty heftily sized glove box. Moving to the rear seats, if you pull this tab right here, the entire rear bench will pop up and then that gives us access to the rear storage, which is nice to have those little hidden compartments right there. Pulling that again, you can drop that back down. Now there is another tab right here to pull the backs of the seats down, but there's not really storage here, just some electrical components. Hopping inside, I'd say you get a pretty decent amount of leg room. I probably have maybe four inches right there with where I'd probably sit up front here at 5'9", and then I have uh, two or three inches of headroom or so. And then moving down here, you get a small storage cubby, USB and USB-C, as well as a household outlet. I like that inclusion. And these seats are just as comfortable back here. This Alcantara suede-esque material continues here too. 
And then folding this down, you get a small armrest with cup holders. Apart from some storage in the cubbies back here and a dome light, there's not many other things to talk about, but it is a fairly decent back seat for a mid-size pickup truck. I'm impressed. All right, driving the Ranger Raptor. As you saw in the beginning of the video, I had the opportunity a little earlier to drive this on a dirt back road that I know of. And while it isn't anywhere near Baja levels, the Ranger handled it incredibly well. It was very, very smooth. It's quite a bumpy road and the suspension just ate it up. And while I haven't had the opportunity to really take this in any serious off-road environment this week, I have no doubt it's capable. I think one of the big pitfalls that this is going to face is the fact that when the original Raptor came out, the F-150, there was no other truck like it. And then when the Raptor Bronco came out a couple of years ago, people again were like, whoa, and now, They've brought over the Raptor Ranger, but it's in a segment that's become incredibly crowded with off-road trucks. And so throughout my time with it this week, I've really enjoyed it. And I think it's an incredibly viable competitor in this space, especially for the price. It's a tough choice if you're looking for a mid-size pickup truck in this segment right now. I think one thing that this definitely will win people over with is the twin turbo V6 with 405 horsepower. Though, it doesn't have anything like the sunroof or the underbody camera like some of the competitors have to really take it over the edge. I think if it had those features and the V6, this would by far stand out as the absolute winner in the segment you know, it's interesting, Ford was one of the first truck companies in the midsize segment to switch over to an exclusive four-cylinder lineup with the previous Ranger. So I'm glad that they listened to customers and they said, all right, we'll bring a V6 back. And they did it incredibly well here. Listen to that, oh my word. Oh my word, it sounds fantastic. And this has so many things that would get you unstuck if you're taking it off-road and it's still very capable if you're using it on the job site as a normal truck or you're just driving it around the pavement looking cool it does all of those things and i think it does all of them very well well that's just about going to wrap up my review of this ford ranger raptor i really hope you guys enjoyed before i go though i'd like to mention that i'm a christian and if you have any prayer requests, I would love to be able to pray for you guys. You can leave those in the comment section below. And lastly, I like to close out on a scriptural reading. This week, I'm in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 through 42. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. And remember, no matter what vehicle you drive, I hope it lasts you a long time and it serves you well. Take care.